Attorney Dan Newland. Catastrophe on the Gulf Coast. The Florida Panhandle dealing with devastation from Hurricane Michael, which made landfall as a strong Cat 4 storm. This area, this would be the most intense hurricane that's, uh, that struck this area uh, since 1851. And it's not over yet. Heavy rains continue moving across the Panhandle, causing major storm surge and flooding. We're tracking the impact of this monster hurricane here in Central Florida. Western News at 6 starts right now. Local. Live, late breaking. West 2 News starts now. An historic and disastrous afternoon in the Panhandle as Hurricane Michael makes landfall just shy of Cat 5 strength. Good evening. I'm Jim Payne. I'm Meredith McDonough. The storm made official landfall at 138 in Mexico Beach with wind speeds of 55 miles per hour. And now we're getting a closer look at all of the damage. We have team coverage spread out across the state. We start with Chief Meteorologist Tony Rodolfi and the latest uh, movements on Hurricane Michael. And as we take a look at that now, uh, Meredith and, and Jim, you can see that cone going right through the Carolinas. So a big swath of very heavy rain, some tropical storm force winds here as we go through the next couple of days. You can see now uh, with the six o'clock advisory, winds are down to 115. Uh, so again, just barely hanging on to that Cat 3 status as we move into central Georgia overnight tonight. Tropical storm force winds in and around Savannah uh, and moving up towards Vidalia as we go through uh, the next six to eight hours. That's how quickly this is moving along. Look at how the eye is filling in a signal that the storm is weakening and slowly winding on down. But on approach to Albany, Georgia, we are looking at the potential now for 90 to 105 mile an hour winds. This will move through South Georgia, then on into the Carolinas. For us, what we're watching on the eastern fringe, some of those stronger showers and some thunderstorms. We had a few of those, but thankfully today, no warnings thus far. The strongest sensor we saw there earlier before it got blown out about 129 Tyndall Air Force Base there as it crossed over Interstate 10. The wind speeds here right around 115 to 125 miles an hour. Happy to report that the winds over I-10 now are in that 60 to 70 mile an hour range. Again, we will continue to monitor this storm system as it plows through Georgia. We'll take a look at some more local impacts as we go through the evening, at least through sunset coming up in just a couple minutes guys back to you tony thanks along with mexico beach one of the areas hit hard by hurricane michael is panama city you can see that some streets have already been flooded and debris is scattered across the roads west Stu Stuart moore is there live and Stu, you are seeing firsthand just how bad it is uh, it's still pretty bad out here, Meredith and Jim, and as you can see, the winds are still pretty much uh, whipping through this area. We are right outside of the mall, if you're familiar with Panama City, off 23rd Street, uh, where this road has been flooded out. We just saw a woman actually cross this area. Uh, it went up to about her knee as far as the water is concerned, but as you can see on both sides of the roadway, uh, power lines are now down in that flood zone. Again, it's about knee deep in this area. Trees are down all up and down this road as well. Power has been out to this region. Uh, since right before the storm came ashore. Amazingly, people were surprised at the fact that the power was still on uh, for so long, but as soon as those strongest of the winds started to come through, things completely changed for the difference uh, here. And you can see some of this area is boarded up, uh, was protected here, this Red Lobster restaurant, one of those uh, places that was protected, but extensive roof damage to almost every structure in this town. This is one of the limited areas that it does have some flash floods uh, that's still happening. We did get some flash flood warnings just a short while ago. They say it's going to take weeks, if not months, to clean this area completely up. We haven't seen any power crews out yet, have seen some cops, so making sure that people are okay, at least in our area. Jim and uh, Meredith, back to you in the studio. All right, Stuart, thanks so much. Even though Hurricane Michael did not make a direct hit on Central Florida, its effects are still being felt. Some strong storms popping up across our area, and there is a threat of tornadoes. Meteorologist Eric Burris is tracking the impact right here at home. The good news is, because we had that first wave of energy move through to help cool down temperatures a little bit, guys, and add clouds into the mix again. The threat for stronger and severe weather is actually coming down just a little bit. Let's take a peek outside now at our SkyCam perspective. This is over at the Orlando International Airport. Uh, it is definitely dreary. You can see the camera bouncing around. We've seen wind gusts run to the tune of 40, 45, even in some cases, nearly 50 miles an hour in our area, but no severe weather. Here's a look at the first alert live Doppler radar. The strongest game in town is right on the Seminole, Orange, and Lake County border.
orders from Sorrento right down to Apopka and continuing Winter Garden of Coe. I uh, do want to show you here the laps as it works over toward Longwood, Lake Mary, Wakiva Springs, Sweetwater. It'll move into Winter Springs at 618, Altamont Springs 609, Deltona and Deland by about 630 or so. Further off to the west, light showers in this area, but nothing strong or severe. So tonight we'll be watching for the potential of a, of a brief spin up, but frankly, Tony and my uh, thought process is that that threat is going down, especially as we approach sunset, just breezy showers continuing. More on all of the forecast, Jim, when I see you in just a bit. All right, Eric, thanks so much. And want to get you live to Tallahassee, where Governor Rick Scott is getting ready to update us on the state's response to Hurricane Michael. Uh, most of the dignitaries that you see at his news conferences are there. The governor not in the picture just yet, although that might be him coming through the door right there. Okay, let's go ahead and take this live. <clears throat> Good evening. I just received a briefing on Hurricane Michael from emergency management uh, here in Tallahassee. This afternoon, Hurricane Michael made landfall near Mexico Beach in Bay County as a monstrous Category 4 storm with winds of 155 miles per hour. Following the landfall, I requested that President Donald Trump issue a major disaster declaration to allow federal resources to flow quickly into the impacted communities. I spoke with the president earlier today, and he has committed to make every federal resource available to help the recovery. Hurricane Michael is the worst storm that the Florida Panhandle has ever seen, and one of the worst power storms to ever make landfall in the United States. We heard of significant impacts at Tyndall Air Force Base and many communities along the coast. As Hurricane Michael continues its destructive path through the Panhandle and leaves our state, we're turning 100% of our focus on search and rescue and recovery. But we need every family to help with this. Listen to local officials. We could still have flash flooding and tornadoes. We heard of two devastating tornadoes in Gadsden County. The weather is still extremely dangerous. Do not take a risk. Be safe. We also need people to be very safe with generators. Do not put a running generator in your home. It is not safe. Do not get out on the roads until you're told it is safe. We need the roads to be open for first responders and search and rescue to do their jobs and save lives. If it is not safe to leave your house, don't leave it. If you and your family made it through the storm safely, the worst thing you can do now is to act foolishly and put yourself and your family in danger or keep law enforcement and rescue workers from saving lives. Our law enforcement and first responders are heroes and are leaving their families to help others. We cannot thank them enough. As I said earlier today, we are deploying a massive wave of response. We will be sending help from air, land, and sea. This includes thousands of responders for power restoration, medical search and rescue, law enforcement, food and water distribution, and every other critical resource. I was briefed by the U.S. Coast Guard today, and they are pre-positioned in Tampa and Mobile with critical, critical assets and resources. Along with our thousands of rescue workers, local law enforcement has nearly 1,800 personnel ready to deploy. Right now, utilities are reporting more than 192,000 homes and businesses without power. We'll have updated numbers out to you throughout the night. So let's all stay safe, stay alert to weather updates, and watch this storm closely through the night. The entire nation and world have watched as this monstrous storm has devastated our Gulf Coast and Panhandle. The love and support we've received from so many has been overwhelming, and we are greatly appreciative of all the resources and prayers that have been offered. On behalf of the Gulf Coast and the great state of Florida, I want to thank the nation for your prayers. Following the storm, we must all come together and work together. During disasters, Floridians take care of each other. We saw this after Ermine, Matthew, Irma, and Maria. Floridians are strong. Floridians are resilient. We will recover, and we'll do it together. Florida is unbreakable, and we'll get through this together. Hurricane Michael cannot break Florida. Visit FloridaDisaster.org for information on shelters and emergency assistance. You can visit FL511.com for current road conditions. 
Families can also call the state emergency information line for assistance. Governor Rick Scott talking about the worst storm that the Panhandle has ever seen, but also talking about pre-positioning supplies and getting help into the affected areas. We know that in Jackson County, we talked to the emergency operations director there, and he said they were going to have to carve their way out of the EOC just to get a look at the damage. They know that it's widespread, and it's probably the same story all across the Panhandle. Yeah, and the governor mentioning the coastal communities that we already knew about, but also Tyndall Air Force Base, he said was pretty beat up after the storm. And now just begins the search and rescue effort. The medical teams coming in and getting the supplies and necessities that these people need. Not mentioning any cases of fatalities. None of those numbers have come out yet. As soon as any of that new information comes out, we'll have it for you. All right. We are now getting a closer look at some of the damage left behind from Hurricane Michael. Check out this boat warehouse that was virtually ripped to shreds. This is in the at the Emerald Coast Marine in Niceville, leaving behind tens of thousands of dollars worth of damage. And in Panama City Beach, roofs and homes were torn apart by wind gusts. There goes one right there. You can see some of the homes virtually collapse. Right now, Central Florida's Federal Emergency Management Urban Search and Rescue Team is headed to the Panhandle to help assist in the rescue and recovery. They left from Orange County about a half an hour ago. They've packed hundreds of pounds of equipment and are even traveling with trained dogs. Their mission, to find and rescue people. We're mainly looking for the ones that didn't heed the warnings to evacuate, and we're checking to make sure all the areas are clear, and if anybody didn't heed those warnings, that we can get in there and get them safely out. This group includes fire crews from Seminole County, Orange County, Orlando, Lake County, Claremont, Mount Dora, and Reedy Creek. A large group of first responders is assembled right now in Ocala and will be rolling out in the middle of the night, hoping to be on the ground to help at first light. West News Dave McDaniels at the Florida State Fire College where those crews continue to team up. Dave? Well, it's clearly a situation where we're going to need first responders from all corners of the state and actually some of our friends in neighboring states. But 200 first responders are here at the Florida State Fire College. They have assembled and they are going to be rolling out of here within hours. At midnight, the search and rescue teams from South Florida that have assembled here will be rolling out as well as two ambulance strike teams from Central Florida. Central Florida ambulance teams that are made up of nine different fire departments. They are going to be going out there as well. A lot of these people have just returned from helping out in Hurricane Florence in the Carolinas, and they know what they are up against, but they also know you can never predict exactly what they're going to find. Um, it's an unprecedented hurricane. We have no idea what to expect. Um, you know, we've been through some of this before, but not of this magnitude. And Lieutenant Dave Williams was one of the people that was up in the Florence, Carolina area, the Wilmington, North Carolina area, a couple of weeks ago helping out with Hurricane Florence. He said that at times they were sleeping in the back of their rescue units because there was no place else to stay, but they would just get a quick shut, bit of shut eye before they'd go out and rescue more people. Again, he's saying that they expect that they will be there roughly eight to ten days. Reporting live in Ocala, Dave McDaniel, West 2 News. Although it hit on the opposite end of the state, effects from Hurricane Michael are being felt right here at home. We have a warning for surfers and beachgoers along the Atlantic coast and why it could keep you out of the water. And NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt continues Hurricane Michael coverage at 6.30. He is live in Panama City. And we'll follow that with a special Hurricane Michael newscast that's at 7 o'clock right here on West 2. West 2 first alert weather. Your advance warning this hurricane season. Alerting you first. To signs of tropical trouble. Expert forecasters with the experience you need to stay safe. The only team proven most accurate. Now 11 years straight. Chief Meteorologist Tony Manolfi. Meteorologist Amy Sweezy. And West 2 first alert weather. Local, live, late breaking coverage this hurricane season. In the 70s, Bill Nelson wears his first suit in Washington, begins unremarkable career. He managed to raise taxes and cut Medicare. Nelson is called an empty suit, adored by big money. Nelson even skips national security briefings and leaves hearings about the algae bloom. After nearly 40 years in D.C., he votes with his party 89% of the
the time. It's been an empty career, and it's time to retire. Empty suit. Bill Nelson. New Republican PAC is responsible for the content of this advertising. Liberal insider Nancy Soderberg. She's just like another liberal Nancy. Soderberg said the great part of her last taxpayer-funded job was mingling with celebrities at luxurious dinners. No wonder Nancy Pelosi's allies are bankrolling Soderberg's campaign. They want to raise middle-class taxes and advance a $32 trillion government takeover of health care. We've had enough of the liberal Nancys. Support American hero Michael Waltz. American Patriots PAC is responsible for the content of this advertising. Breaking news alerts, live newscasts, and interactive radar. Download the West 2 News app today. At Toyota of Orlando and Toyota of Claremont, it's our payment reduction event. We want to help you get out of your old car loan release and lower your monthly payment. Drive a new 2018 RAV4 XLE for just $189 a month. See our big city low prices online now at toyotaorlando.com and toyotaofclaremont.com. This is St. Pete Clearwater, home to Clearwater Beach. The number one beach in the U.S. is chosen by travelers on TripAdvisor. Experience the American tropics, 90 minutes west of Orlando. Beachesoforlando.com. Love the beach. He promised us. Zero cuts out of state general revenue for education. But it wasn't true. He cut $1.3 billion from K-12 education. And gave tax breaks to corporations instead. Scott cut $20 million from pre-K, slashed Bright Future scholarships, and over 1,000 teaching jobs gone. Today, Florida's schools have fallen to 40th in the nation. Rick Scott, another shady millionaire who doesn't look out for you. SMP is responsible for the content of this ad. At Toyota of Orlando and Toyota of Claremont, it's our payment reduction event. We want to help you get out of your old car loan release and lower your monthly payment. Buy a 2018 RAV4 XLE for just $19,488. See our big city low prices online now at toyotaorlando.com and toyotaofclaremont.com. Closed captioning driven by Toyota of Orlando and Toyota of Claremont, where big city low prices are just a click away. We're getting a look at our first rescue from Hurricane Michael. Emergency crews in Okaloosa County rescued a man after his boat capsized and washed ashore. Crews say the high wind gusts and rough waves caused the boat to overturn. There is no word on that man's condition. Hurricane Michael's impact can be felt along the central Florida Atlantic coast with wind and big surf kicking up. Although very few swimmers were in the water, lifeguards still had work to do keeping them safe. Beach safety officers spent the day warning visitors that the waters are not safe beyond a certain point. Well, it was knocking us down, moving us quite a ways. So you didn't go very deep, I No, we didn't go very deep at all. No, it was about knee level and that was more than enough. Beach officials say that one person suffered a leg injury while swimming. Meanwhile, Daytona International Speedway is being used as a staging area for crews that will be vital to recovery in the panhandle. During the storm, waters rose along Crystal River in Citrus County. Uh, West 2's Bob Hazen is there, and Bob, they were really prepared. That's right. Right now we're pretty much at high tide. So hopefully after this is when the water will start going back down. But it is definitely very high. This is the Crystal River itself behind me and the water has now gone over the side of this boardwalk here. We've been watching this throughout the afternoon as the water just kept on rising, but it's over that walkway right now. And if you look over here to my right, you can see just how high the water is in these people's yards as well. This is a yard or at least it should be normally, but right now it's completely covered in a couple of feet of water and you can see the folks there hanging out on their deck right now it's surrounded by all of this water again this has been the storm surge kicked up by Michael even though we're so far away from where the storm made landfall it does bring with it that storm surge into the river here and it's causing all of these problems and I talked to the people at that house right there just a short time ago and they say despite the fact that they're surrounded by water and it's probably going into their house at this point they say this is not as bad as they expected I was expecting a lot more than it is uh, we were actually plan on going but since it slowed down we I mean we hadn't left yet Now, pretty much everywhere along the river itself, you're seeing this kind of stuff on the boat ramps, water washing up and going into parking lots and so forth. Roads also shut down around Citrus County and in here in Crystal River because of this water going onto the roads. We also had a report from the sheriff's office in Citrus County that a car got washed away from a boat ramp and out into the bay. But other than that, no major problems here as far as damage to homes or structures that we've heard about so far. But we're going to stay out here and gather the latest information. Of course, 
We find any of that, we'll bring it to you. Reporting live in Citrus County, Bob Hayes and West 2 News. We will have more Hurricane Michael coverage during a West 2 News special airing tonight. That's at 7 o'clock. And you can also get real-time alerts while you're on the go. Just head to West.com or download the free West 2 News mobile app. Although it is quickly moving north, the damage from Michael is far from over. Yeah, we have uh, team weather coverage of Hurricane Michael. We'll start with Chief Meteorologist Tony Badolfi. And I tell you what, uh, guys, we take a look at where this storm is. We have a Category 3 in far southwestern Georgia. Amazing. Even though it's winding down, it's still a very powerful storm with a lot of power outages likely in southwest and even south central Georgia. Yeah, the strongest hurricane that that part of the country has seen in years. Right. And the reality is it's about to move into places that Florence hit just a few weeks ago. So as they're cleaning up, though, too, as we get into Florence, that's a great point. We're talking about two, three, four, maybe even five inches of rain on flooded areas already. Let's begin with the wind perspective. Again, the six o'clock advisory. We're getting an update from the Hurricane Center every hour now as we continue to watch the winds around the center of uh, Michael. And as you can see, uh, the pressure's going up and the winds are coming on down. That's what we like to see. We just have to get through the next couple of hours. Look at that rainfall swath right there along the path of Michael over the next few days there. You can see about three to six inches in portions of central Georgia and about three to six inches along the North and South Carolina border. Order. Peak wind gust today thus far, Tyndall Air Force Base 129, Mariana 102, Panama City 101 miles an hour, and the state capital just shy of hurricane force winds. You can see the eye filling on in. On approach to Albany, Georgia, Dublin, Georgia is going to get hit pretty hard too, as will Savannah. You take a look at the wind gusts from earlier today, 129 at Tyndall Air Force Base and right over a portion of Interstate 10. We had significant winds, over 120 mile an hour winds. That's why we had some issues along Interstate 10. And then now when you take a look at Albany, Georgia, look at all the flood watches that are up. A lot of heavy rain is expected here in a very short period of time. Winds here in that uh, seven to 100 mile an hour range from Albany back up to the north and the east. Take a look at Tallahassee, much improved from earlier today. So when we take a look at the surge, still watching now. The Gulf of Mexico at Apalachicola, the Gulf of Mexico at Spring Creek, and St. Mark's River. Uh, storm surge here anywhere from 7 to as much as 9 feet, causing some major flooding with more on our local forecast. Here's meteorologist Eric Burns. All right. Thankfully, no storm surge flooding or anything like that here, though we've certainly been seeing some peripheral impacts being uh, rough surf rip currents at area beaches. But we're also watching another element, which is North Florida seeing the threat for some spin. And the right front quadrant, they call it, of these uh, storm systems could see the potential of uh, tornadic conditions. That's why the Storm Prediction Center has posted a tornado watch for North Florida until 2 o'clock in the morning. That does include Marion and Flagler counties, though, frankly, the threat for that strong or severe condition seems to be coming down. And by sunset tonight, I think we'll be doing OK. First alert live Doppler radar showing these heavy downpours working over toward uh, West Volusia County. 30 mile per hour winds in there with rainfall totals and rain Rain rates going down just a little bit, about one to two inches of rain per hour. Through the next few hours time, we do expect to see some of those showers moving through. Temperatures tonight dropping into the mid to upper 70s, a muggy night, and tomorrow, Tony, into the lower 90s, a warm afternoon. Yeah, southwest winds will do that here, won't it? Let's take a look, though, at the extended seven-day forecast because there are some temperatures there that we are going to fully enjoy Saturday and Sunday morning. Temperatures will be in the mid to the upper 60s afternoon highs nice and comfortable in the upper 80s west 2 news at 6 continues in just a moment now to our journey across america when we get done chicago will be the safest big city in this country you're talking about housing i'm talking about employment opportunities we see and for the Heroes first time emerging stories that impact hometowns and foster Kia Rusty has amazing Kia Stingers for zero down. Plus, they just announced zero percent interest. What, on the Kia Stinger? On the Stinger. What about maintenance? Two years maintenance included on everything we sell. Shop 24-7 at citykia.com. Amendment 3 gives Florida voters control of gambling. And that's how it works in lots of states. Red states like Texas, blue states like California, big states like New York, and small ones like Rhode Island. Even gambling states like New Jersey put voters in charge. 
It's a common sense safeguard that reduces corruption and empowers voters. Most Americans already have this power. You should too. Vote yes on Amendment 3. At Trial Pro, we have the size and resources to battle the biggest insurance companies in America. We're prepared to fight these giants to get you every penny you deserve. Visit trialpro.com or call 1 800 Trial Pro. That early morning, I strap in to a rocket that weighs four and a half million pounds. We slid by the steel of the launch tower. I looked back at Earth. I didn't see religious divisions. I didn't see political divisions. I didn't see racial divisions. What I saw is we're all in this together. And if we just remember that, we'd get a lot more done. I'm Bill Nelson, and I approve this message. At Toyota of Orlando and Toyota of Claremont, we want to lower your monthly car payment. Drive a new 2018 Tacoma Double Cab, just $199 a month. Go to toyotaoforlando.com and toyotaofclaremont.com. Drug violence, the opioid epidemic, human trafficking. Florida's attorney general handles thousands of cases. The job needs a prosecutor, not a politician. I'm Ashley Moody, and as a prosecutor, I took criminals down. As a judge, I locked them up. That's why nearly 90% of Florida sheriffs support me, while my opponent, Sean Shaw, never prosecuted a case. His first one shouldn't be as attorney general. Ashley Moody, a prosecutor, not a politician. At City Kia, drive a new Kia Soul for $13,849 a month, make no payments for 90 days, and get the new Stinger for zero down with 0% financing. Plus, two years maintenance on everything included. CityKia.com. Bavard County beaches and waterways are feeling the effects of Hurricane Michael, and probably the largest effect is on the baby sea turtles. Right now, tens of thousands of baby sea turtles are hatching along the beaches, mm -hmm. and they must immediately swim out to a seaweed line 20 miles offshore. But with the wind coming in from the southeast, running parallel to both the Atlantic shoreline and the Banana and Indian rivers, that's causing a major disruption to their hatching process. They're emerging from the nest and they're either getting caught up with the seaweed that's already on the beach or they're getting caught up in the seaweed that's coming in from the ocean. Officials believe only 75% of sea turtles will make it through these rough waters. The Second Harvest Food Bank is already geared up to ship food to victims of Hurricane Michael. Volunteers began assembling the boxes today. By Saturday, they plan to have 6,000 emergency boxes of food ready. There's enough food in one package to feed a family of four for about a week. Second Harvest will work with sister food banks to figure out where the needs are the greatest. If you want to donate food, you can drop it off at the food bank. We have a link of all the needed items for you at WESH.com. Governor Rick Scott activated the Florida Disaster Fund to help hurricane victims. The Florida Disaster Fund is the state's private fund aimed to help communities responding and recovering during times of emergency or disaster. Funds will support disaster relief organizations in responding to Hurricane Michael. Donations are tax deductible and can be made by credit card or by check. We'll be right back. For the connected moments that matter most, you want the best, and Spectrum delivers. Starting with Spectrum TV, with stunning HD and thousands of titles free on demand. Call 833-214-8998. Then get Spectrum Internet with game-changing speed starting at 100 megabits, plus a free modem. Switch to Spectrum TV and Internet today from $89.98 a month. Call 833-214-8998. And introducing a new way to stay connected on the go, Spectrum Mobile. America's largest, most reliable LTE network. Combined with our nationwide Wi-Fi network. Get it now with free talk and text with our unlimited data plan for $45 a line or our buy the gig plan for $14 a gig. Switch today and save up to 40% on your mobile bill. The best network, the best devices, the best value. Get Spectrum TV and internet from $89.98 a month and Spectrum Mobile with our unlimited data plan for $45 a line, all with no contracts. Call 833-214-8998. No one chooses to get breast cancer, to have MS, or grow up with asthma. But in Congress, Ron DeSantis chose to side with insurance companies, voting 15 times to let them discriminate against people with pre-existing conditions and deny them coverage. And when asked what cancer patients should do if they lose their coverage, DeSantis said, show up to the emergency room. Ron DeSantis is wrong for Florida. 
We need a Medicare Advantage plan with more benefits, but we want a plan we can trust. Freedom Health is a Medicare Advantage HMO plan with comprehensive dental, vision, and hearing. They've been rated a top plan in the state for quality of care. My primary care visits, even this fitness membership, costs nothing. Really? I even get money back every month. Comprehensive dental and money back? With Freedom, there's zero monthly premium on most plans, and some Freedom plans refund up to $100 back every month in your Social Security check. That's up to $1,200 per year per member. Plus, get up to $600 a year in over-the-counter items, too. That really adds up. Freedom also offers no-cost preventive services to help you stay healthy. Call 1-866-484-0319. I'm on full VA benefits, but it costs nothing to have Freedom, too. Call 1-866-484-0319 to attend a seminar and receive a $10 Publix gift card with no obligation to enroll. I'm Matt Morgan. If you've been hurt on the job, call Pound Law from your cell phone. Morgan & Morgan. Pound Law. That's all. Closed captioning is sponsored by Empire Today. Our coverage from Hurricane Michael is far from over. Be sure to join us at 7 for a special edition of West 2 News covering Hurricane Michael. And that's our report for tonight. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt is next. We'll see you again tonight at 7.